everybody it's cinnamon cooney your art chef and today i'm going to show you step by step how you can create this abstract floral this is easier than you think i'm going to break it down in every way it can be broken down and explain the techniques the tools the mixes everything to help me do that is my husband john hello this is also part of a daily painting challenge i do every year called acrylic april where we meet up from april 1st to april 30th i'm not kidding it's not april 1st it's we meet up every single day and we do a daily painting with the community now this fantastic program this year comes with some extra stuff check the description below because there's a link to the school uh we have an art store so you can find the materials here uh in our art store you don't have to you don't have to buy anything that's not required because we'll tell you what it is you you be in charge of your own shopping um uh also there's a book and sometimes that can help you guys the usual stuff that you're used to with acrylic april is still there if you've never done it before and there's a facebook group so much stuff linked in the description where i had the materials and other useful information so you've got to open the more button and then speaking of more i'm going to show you more about how you can create this yourself so get your paint get your brushes and come back i'm really going to show you how to paint this so as for the usual eight by eight surface that we're going to be painting on today i love how this whole month goes together so well with all the pieces matching the other pieces it does on the paint palette, we have Burnt Sienna, Mars Black, Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Quinacridone Magenta, Cad Red, Cadmium Yellow, and Titanium White. Shall we throw a step up? Ooh, I love a step. I love a step. Now, I'm going to use a ruler, a T-square ruler. Um, and the reason that I use this is that I am uh, straight line challenged. So, this is my happens, workaround yeah. for that. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, that's what they're for. They're rulers and straight edges. And then I was like, and I'm going to use a black Posca pen. You could use chalk. You could, I'm going to move this like over right, like, mm, like a quarter inch past that edge to the inch thing. So it's like a an inch and a quarter kind of, kind of distance. And I'm going to come up, mm, let's look at three inches. Oh, I like that. That's a nice weight. That's good. I might... Go up a little more to three and a half just to make sure that we're good. Now, whenever I use a paint pen with the ruler, I always wipe it with a towel because um, sometimes the ink wicks underneath and then your fingers will get it and then you'll drag it everywhere and you'll be like, oh, that was so frustrating. Another three and a half inches. And again, if you don't have a paint pen, you could use a pencil. You could use another tool to uh, work this out. But right now, what I have for the structure of this is that. And the reason that I like to hold it out separately um, is that... Let me make sure that I'm straight here. <laughs> My lines are straight, but if I'm not straight or the camera's off, it looks a little wonky. But it's straight. It's about fisheye. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I really want a nice black and white here. And I don't want to even have to fight color with the white to get that. So that's why I'm blocking this out so that everything around it I'm painting, which I will do now, um, really just sort of stands out. And I'll go ahead and use my big uh, half inch. This was the number 20 Raphael. You could use, if you had the Princeton three quarter inch here, you could use that just fine too. So I guess this is an inch wide, just somewhere an inch to a half an inch, you know, just to give you a break on the painting and I'm gonna take a little bit of my phthalo blue and phthalo green together you can see this we're mixing this and we're gonna make some turquoise this and turquoise just the best color I like it I like it very much and I like uh, angle brushes because sometimes they give me nice lines you can paint the sides if you want that's okay you're not wrong to do that it's not required. And this background doesn't have to be an even uniform color. Some of it can be lighter, some of it can be darker because, well, that's what's nice about what we're doing. Now, oh, I really love this. This is not John's favorite color <laughs> for filming. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, it's I'm, uh, I'm making adjustments as we speak to make sure that we're. <laughs> He's just like, why you gotta do this to me? And I'm like, because it's fun, and it is fun. Okay. 
It's super fun. Especially in our lives. I have uh, this color uh, all over my art studio when the art studio is fully built up. Um, we're moving, as you guys know, so everything is packed until that finalizes. And uh, so all my cool aqua stuff and teal and turquoise is somewhere in storage. All right, that is all that takes. Just cover the canvas surface with your favorite color of turquoise, which is thalo blue, thalo green, and titanium white. I always think it's a nice idea to wash my brushes out thoroughly and put them aside for a final washing at the end of a painting session. Let's dry this with a hair dryer and come back and continue painting. So for step two here, I'm going to want to use a bright brush. I have an example of three brushes. They're all very different. This is a number eight Catalyst by Princeton in a short handle. This is a number eight Simply Simmons. And this is a number 12 Raphael Textura. Now I'll use the Textura, um, but you could use any brush like that. What you want is a brush that is wide enough to give you a stripe across and has a nice edge, because that's how we're going to get this effect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just that's what we're going for. I'm going to get a little bit wet and I'm going to start with a black stripe. And I just use the width of the brush to create the stripe. Does not need to be perfect. In fact, I find it's better if it's not. So that, so I come up here. And I'm just going to do little stripes up my vase. I very much like the black and white striped vase. It's very Beetlejuice. I had an outfit when I was a teenager that was just these stripes, just everything. Uh -huh. That's just good. gloves and hats and the shirt. I was really committed to the overall feeling of it. Now I'm going to have flowers and everything up here. So the fact that I'm just finishing it out with this black stripe isn't going to hurt me in any way. And I'm going to go ahead and come through, even though it's there with white paint, and it's going to be okay that it's going to pick up some black. I don't mind that. It's good to me when something shows as painted, especially in this type of painting, because it really creates a nice effect. So that's all we're doing there. We're just striping that. We're going to allow that to dry. You can use a hair dryer, as I'm about to do, or air dry it. Either way, it's all okay with me. And come back and I'll show you what the next step is. So we're going to do kind of a weird thing here. Um, when you see it finished, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I love that. But part of this is setting this background. So I'm going to take the brush we just striped and make sure all the black paint is out of it. And I'm going to take my cad red and my cad yellow together and I'm going to make a distinctive orange. I mean it's like practically a pyro orange and I'm going to make some preemptive shapes for my roses here. How I kind of do that is I have a little curl and another little curl. These are all common. This is very similar to how we did it in the watercolor roses way back. I want to make sure that this one is bigger. The reason that I do this this way is so that I can see where the flowers are and then I can put the leaves in and even though there's sort of this solid orange that's going to end up being behind there, um, it lets me work out some of the placement. I'm going to put one down here. These are going to be kind of a downward facing like little bud. I like that. Maybe I'm going to pull some of these back here with that same brush. Those are kind of like little, little rosebuds. I like those. They could be 
um, leaves, but actually I'm pretty sure I'm going to want these here to be flowers coming off. These are not intrinsically the colors of the flowers. But much like all of the other abstracts that we've been doing, make sure that that is here. I want to face that flower that direction, so kind of focusing it there. Now when I come back with the other color, you're going to be like, oh, I see how that totally worked. I come here and go off a little bit. So by putting some of the blooms off the canvas, uh, what that allows to have happen is a um, idea that the world that we're painting, even though it's abstracted, exists beyond the confines of this window that we're looking into. I like that very much. You can see I'm kind of doing that each direction. Doesn't have to all be a uniform and perfect orange. I just want to get it orange because some of this orange is going to peek out. Put this one here and facing kind of up. And maybe another little bud there and there. Now I'm also going to do an interesting thing where I'm going to imply some leaves uh, coming out with my round. Uh, this is a number 10 Raphael round. So I'm going to take the red and yellow, make an orange again, and let's draw a little stem coming back. And this is how I'm going to paint the leaves. The little pops of orange that are going to be peeking out they're really important to the color composition of this. And so that's why I'm going to this treble. Just another fun way that you can do that. And when I come back with my greens and I paint, I'm going to want a little of that orange to show. A little bit. I'm adding a connective stem here. This isn't like any flowers that you might think of other than, well, as we're doing in this particular course, abstractly. Right? Because that's what we have is abstract flowers. Yeah, you're not trying to make them specifically. Any specific breed or type of flower. But they can emote that. They really can. And should. Now, one way that I might do this is go slightly lighter in the orange in here. Where I'm trying to say, oh, this is more, maybe more of a leaf. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of fill that in with a little bit of orange. Not enough to take out the work that I've just set, but enough to know that some of that might peek through the greenery. So some of the turquoise will peek through, some of the green will peek through. It will be quite the sight. I think. I feel. Let's dry everything and I'll show you what you're going to do next. So to create the illusion of some depth in here, I will be doing some layering of object placement, but I want to start out with some of my greenery now. I'm going to take my phthalo green over to my burnt sienna. And I'm going to kind of deepen the phthalo green with a bit of that. I will add some yellow to this little grouping. And then we're going to come and get a little bit of white. So we're making kind of an unusual mint. From dark to pretty light. And what you see me doing is rolling out my round brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is make kind of a little stem down here. 
And again, remember, we're not going to paint out every single bit of the orange, and that's kind of a careful and tricky bit here. Because you want some of that orange to be peeking through. Kind of a power move when you know how to make it. I'm going to come over here. Place some in. Dig some in there. Now over here in the background we can do some very dark green. I'm not going to take out all the orange here though. I want some of it to show through. Just peeking here and there. This will allow me to uh, do some leaves that are cradling the flowers and that'll be important back into my green that had a little bit of white into it and this will also help me see uh, where the petals are versus where the stem and leaves are So there's some spatial like kind of imagination that we kind of are practicing here. Trying to remember where we're going to put objects or how we're going to represent them in our world. I like that very much. Uh, you don't have to dry it, but I think it will look better if you do. Uh, so I'm going to dry it. We'll come back and do the next step of this. So hope you're doing good. Take a deep breath. We're going to do the next part of the leaves. I'm going to come in. I might add a little more yellow to my green and white over here. And just to remind you, that was burnt sienna, thalo green, a little bit of cad yellow. We had put some white here, but this one we really lightened with white. So this is our value change. And I'm going to add some of these highlights in the leaves. See how that gives them some dimensionality? But you're seeing the orange, the green, and this through here. Not really going to worry about the stem, giving that the highlight. Oh, I jumped up on John up top. I do that on him, to him That's on okay. occasion. I'm watching. All right, and then back over here. Now that's that first layer or thought of green and, and leaves and things that we're going to have here. Uh, I want you to dry everything. We're going to come back and we get to do these fun little flowers and then we'll do the finishing touches with the final leaves. I actually want to take this out of the orange and go into a pink. I'm going to take a smidge of my yellow over to my quinacridone pink and really sort of mix that in. It sort of warms it. I'm going to take a little white because you do want the centers to be dark and you can see that I'm wiping the paint out of the brush. I'm using my bright. This is again that number 12 bright. And let's come here now to get the center. I'll do the corners. I might even go darker than this. Kind of pulling some dark there. I will be coming back with something lighter as I go. I'm going to also come into some very light pink as well because as the roses come out, they're going to get lighter. So I'll come here and add that. Maybe come in with a little bit of white on that outside edge. And then that's kind of like, there we go, getting it in there. It's a little touch, touch, touch. I think I will come here and 
Add a little bit of pink there. And add a little bit to that downward flower. I think I just want to go pinker with that. I just like that a little brighter in the pink. So see how these are curved, curled strokes? And I use the dark center to determine the face of the flower. If you did the acrylic April where we did flowers last year, right? This is kind of a concept that you feel fairly confident in. I'm going to come back with some lighter colors. I'm just getting the dark pink in right now. I'm not taking away all of the orange. Okay. Let's call this a step. Give it, well, no, I got to get the flowers here to coming down too. I'm going to use my round to get those. Much like the green leaves, though, I'm not going to take away every bit. Add a little pink there. Every bit of the orange, right? Every bit of what I did. Now let's dry this thoroughly. Come back, and I'll show you what the next part of this rose is. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to continue on with my now very pink number 12 Raphael <laughs> bright, and I'm going to add a lot more white into my pink. All right, that's going to create a much lighter pink. And I'm going to make little lines at the center. Now, I'm going to explain this. This is, I, I was like, these aren't any particular rose uh, flowers. These are abstract flowers, but they have become rose-like. And so I'm kind of going rose, and that is where that comes from. John was super worried that I would confuse you. No, not super worried. Just, you know. It is a, you know, sometimes when we say things, folks are like, but, but, wait, what? It's true. It's true. And when we abstract a subject, sometimes we kind of get into what it reminds us of or what it feels like, you know. Smaller little marks in there. And then as I come out on this rose, I do bigger marks. So you see I just use the corner and then go bigger as I go out. This is definitely something that you can practice. I think I actually even did this in the beginner acrylic painting course as a technique to practice. <laughs> it was one of my technique ones. Yeah, it may have been. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And that looks pretty good. So we're doing, you know, two tones. That's impacting us, right? The size of the brush stroke is creating the implication. The location kind of implies the face. These could be peonies or a lot, any kind of cabbage style flower. Now I'm going to switch over to my round brush. Like you do. Load it up with a very light pink. And put some highlights on some of the downward buds. Not taking out all the pink that's there or the orange or any of that, but just enough to kind of create that same tonality. All right, everything gets dried, and then we put in the last of the leaves to sort of layer these flowers into their vase. 
These flowers, whatever they be, could be peonies, yeah, could be roses, whatever could be they any are. cabbage flower, any cabbage flower, any could cabbage. Be cabbage. Who knows? Because sometimes they're all pink and purple at the end. That's true. But it's kind of the technique you do for that. Mostly for roses, but we're gonna just ignore that. So I can promise you, stuff like this looks amazing big. I'm gonna go ahead and get into my dark green again. And if you remember, that's the phthalo green, a little burnt sienna, some cad yellow, and a smidge of white for the first layer. And I'm going to add a little bit of a bud or stem to the back of that flower. And I'm going to specifically add some leaf shapes around our flowers that go up onto the bud, if you can see that. Right? That creates that sort of, they're in the vase. I'm going to add that there because I feel like it needed that closure. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my color over into my white. It can have a little more yellow into it. That's fine. Going to kind of just go in there. Just layering. I haven't even dried it. Just some of those highlights in there because what's in the vase is a little bit darker. Right? But I don't want to take away all the dark. And what eventually ends up happening is this sort of depth and placement of the flowers. Okay, now this one I will actually sign because there's enough of a subject present for the viewer to, you know, there, it's probably they're not going to hang it upside down or be inclined to do something different with it in its presentation. It's, it's objective enough. It has enough of a subject matter, barely, but enough of a subject matter for somebody to go, this is up and this is down and these are these things. So it's not a pure abstract by, by any qualifier. I'm going to go ahead and just get some pink and come down here and give that a signature. So one of the, one of the ones that I'm signing on the front. Now I can tell you and promise you that when you do these big, they are really spectacular. There you go. Just a little signature. It's there. It's present. It's a similar value to the background, so it's almost uh, invisible is what that is. And that's kind of nice sometimes to have it be really, like, diminished. Okay, let me tell you what you're going to do next. We are going to, what are we going to do, John, tomorrow? Paint another one. I knew that was a trick question. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the puzzlement so, look on my face. This is part of a 30-day painting program, Acrylic April. So if you're having fun with this and you just found this one and you were like, this was fun, I want to do some other stuff, I've got so many. Now, remember, there's resources. There's the, you know, on objective stuff, there can be traceables on the website that are free when something has enough of a subject matter to require one if you're not into drawing or doing that um we also have the book we have a school the school gets a little extra uh, content and information like this one i might talk a little bit more about the construction of this uh, flower and how to get that uh, brush stroke better um, kind of after project thoughts things like that and it's sequential and everything is located in one place sometimes youtube makes that hard these are free and up on youtube and you can follow it the usual way we've been doing it every year but we decided to go the extra effort and put together that school. So that might be helpful to you if that type of orderly learning makes a big difference in your experience. Um, but you can find everything on the website. There is also a store. So uh, for the most part, everything that you see here um, is available for sale in the Art Sherpa Art Store. 
and uh, you don't have to buy anything from us to enjoy these free classes. <laughs> but if you're looking for the stuff and you'd like to get it, we're trying to make sure we have good prices and good stuff going on for you guys there. Um, so that's available to you as well. I love the book part of it very much and the school part of it. Really just everything to help you. Now, there's also a group, Acrylic April, the Acrylic April group on Facebook. That is a safe place to share your paintings if you're doing Acrylic April. Um, there's also the Art Sherpa Official if you're just doing my tutorials. Either one of those places, but Acrylic April, if you're doing the Acrylic April journey, people are kind and encouraging and you know, if you just need a little hoorah or if you just need to just share, hey, I did it, that is such a great place to go. Be sure and go by and join. Um, you're really going to love it. And I'd like to encourage you to just take part of this. Try this with us every day. If You know, if you just found this, go back to the beginning and be like, all right, I'm going to give it a go and, you know, see what else we've got going on. I'm so excited. I want to see you tomorrow. So I'm going to say be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I'll see you at a measle really soon. Bye-bye.